Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Integrating by Substitution. Now we integrate by substitution when we have a complicated expression in terms of x that we can make simpler if we were to get it in terms of some other variable via suitable substitution. So there's some way here, if we use this substitution here, of u equals cos of x plus 1, that we can get all of this integration in terms of u instead of in terms of x and we end up with something simpler. So let's try this first question here and we'll see what happens. Now usually you're given the substitution, but we'll explore questions where you're not given it and we'll see a suitable way to come up with the substitution yourself. But we've got here, u is equal to cos of x plus 1. Now we need to get this whole thing in terms of u instead. So we somehow need to replace this dx with du and we somehow need to get all these x's into u's instead. Now step one is always to differentiate the substitution. So the left hand side just becomes du over dx because we differentiate it with respect to x. Now if we differentiate this with respect to x, that becomes minus sine x and the plus 1 disappears. Now we want to be able to replace this dx here, so we should make dx a subject. Now we can actually treat this sort of as an ordinary fraction. If we multiply by the dx, it comes over here, and then we divide by that minus sine x. So we get minus 1 over sine x, and then we've got that du there. And then that's equal to dx, which we times through by. So we've just rearranged this to make dx a subject. And that's because we can now replace that dx there with this expression here. Now, this expression here still has an x in it. But we hope that when we substitute it in, it's going to cancel with some sine x somewhere. So we just end up with something in terms of u. So let's try that. We put it in here. We've got the integral of e to the power of, well, cos x plus 1 is the u here. So that can just be written as u. Then we've still got the sine x, which we can't replace yet, because we can't write sine x in terms of u, easily anyway. And then the dx we worked out was this expression here. So we had minus 1 over sine x. The only reason I put that in a bracket is just so it's clear we're not subtracting the 1 over sine x. We're timesing by negative 1 over sine x. And we had that du there. So literally all I've done is just substitute stuff into here so it's now all in terms of u. And can you notice that this sine x here cancels with the over sine x here. So we're left with something very simple. We have minus e to the u du. And now it's a suitably simple expression to integrate. So that just becomes minus e to the u plus c. Now, this substitution was just a sort of temporary thing to help us integrate this expression. We still want to end up with an expression in terms of x. So all we do is just substitute back the u for cos x plus 1. So we get minus e to the cos x plus 1 plus c. So let's review the steps. We first differentiated the substitution. Then step 2 was to just substitute everything in. Then we actually did this integration. Now that our whole integral is in terms of some other variable here, u, and the last step, step four, is to get back in terms of x by just putting in your substitution, u is cos x plus one. Now let's try this Excel question here. The difference with this question is that we now have limits on our integral. Now notice that we're integrating this as x varies between 0 and 4, but we want to get this whole thing in terms of u instead. So we actually have to change the limits by finding what values of u would have given us these values of x. So if I just write this out, now I'm going to do my usual step one, I'm going to differentiate the substitution. So if I start with u equals 2 plus, and I'm going to write that as 2x plus 1 to the half. So I can differentiate it using the chain rule. Now du over dx is, well that disappears, and then look, this is blah to the half. So the outer function differentiated is half blah to the minus half, and then you times by the blah differentiated, the inner function differentiated. This is just a chain rule. So we times by 2, and we can see the half times 2 is just 1. So we end up with 2x plus 1 to the minus half. Now if we make dx a subject, we multiply through the dx so it's on the other side, and then we're going to divide by this so that that power becomes positive. So we have 2x plus 1 to the positive half du is equal to dx. And notice in this particular case, we can get this in terms of u. We can see that 2x plus 1 to the half is just u minus 2. So we've got u minus 2 du 
is equal to dx. And that's great because when I replace this dx here with this expression here, everything is going to be in terms of u. That's good. Now we've got an extra step here. We have to change these limits here. So when the limit of x is 4, so when x is 4, what will u be? Well, if we just sub that 4 into here, we can find out what the equivalent u would be. So that gives you u is equal to 2 plus, and then 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9, 9 to the half is 3, and that is 5. So this top limit becomes 5, and then what about when x is that bottom number of 0? u is going to be, well, 2 plus 0 plus 1 is 1 to the half, that's square root of 1, and that becomes 3. So now we've got our new bounds. So I'm now going to just shove everything into this. So we're going to get limits of instead 5 and 3. Then we have 1 over, well, the 2 plus root 2x plus 1, that whole thing is just u. And then the dx we worked out was u minus 2 du. So I'm just going to times by the u minus 2 and put it at the top of this fraction, and then the du here. And now again, we've got something much simpler to integrate now than the original expression. Now notice this fraction can be split up, so I'm going to write this as u over u, which is 1, minus 2 over u, like that. And that's relatively easy to integrate. The 1 becomes u minus, and 2 over u integrates to 2 ln u, and we have the square brackets with the 5 and the 3, so we just have two normal brackets. If we sub in the 5 into this expression, we get 5 minus 2 ln 5, and when we sub in the 3 into this, we get 3 minus 2 ln 3, and if we were to simplify that, well the 5 minus 3 is 2, and then we've got minus 2 ln 5, minus minus 2 ln 3, so that's 2 ln 3 minus 2 ln 5. Now if I just in this tiny amount of space I have left, do that. 2 ln 3 minus 2 ln 5. We can factor out the 2 to give 2 brackets ln 3 minus ln 5, and then by laws of logs that becomes 2 ln 3 over 5, because remember log of a minus log of b is log of a over b. So we end up with 2 plus 2 ln 3 over 5, and that is the final answer. And by the way, with integration, you generally need your answers at exact value, so we want to have the ln here, so it's not sufficient to just use the integration button on here, because that won't give you an exact value in terms of luns. Now, this final problem here, we're provided with no substitution. So we've got sine of 2 theta over 1 plus cos theta, now let's try to think of a suitable substitution. In general, if you have a denominator in a fraction consisting of multiple terms added or subtracted, you should make the substitution that denominator. Similarly, if you have a power expression like this, you should make the substitution whatever's in the power. In this case, you should make the u the cos x plus 1, as indeed we did. And you can see indeed with this fraction, again, we've made the substitution the denominator, just as I'm about to do here. Also, if you have an expression under square root, often you would make the substitution whatever is under that square root. So that's a general principle behind what a substitution you should use, but there is a degree of trial and error sometimes to get the best substitution. So let's do this. Pi over 2, 0, sine of 2 theta over 1 plus cos theta, d theta. And we're going to make our substitution to be u equals the denominator of this fraction. So let's try that. We get du over d theta rather than dx, because it's in terms of theta. That disappears. That becomes minus sine of theta. And then we need to make d theta the subject, because that's what we're substituting in. So if we times by the d theta, divide by that minus sine theta, we get minus 1 over sine theta du, and then we've moved the d theta over here. So we've made d theta the subject, so we can substitute it in. We also need to change the bounds as well, because these bounds are in terms of theta at the moment, but we want the bounds instead to be in terms of u. So if theta was equal to pi over 2, that top limit there, then u would be 1 plus cos of pi over 2, and cos of pi over 2, that's cos of 90 degrees, which is 0, so that just becomes 1 
and if theta was equal to that bottom limit of zero, we get u equals one plus cos of zero, which is equal to one plus one, which is two. So let's substitute everything into this now. We get the integral of, now the pi over two became one, and the zero became two, so we've got these new limits here. And we'll worry about the fact that these are the wrong way around in a second, but we need to make sure these exactly correspond to each other. We shouldn't just arbitrarily reverse them so that the bigger number is on the top. Now, sine of two theta, we could use a double angle formula there to get that as two sine theta cos theta. The one plus cos theta, we can just write as u. And I know we've still got thetas here, but stuff is going to cancel in a second. And then the d theta, we worked out was this thing here. So we got minus one over sine theta du. Let's see what cancels, because we're trying to get everything in terms of u. There shouldn't be a theta in sight. So we can see that sine theta cancels the over sine theta there. And then this cos theta here, to get that in terms of u, you can see that cos of theta is u minus one. So we've got u minus one there. We've got this minus here. And we've also got that two there, and that's all over u. So everything's in terms of u now. Now there's a little trick. If you were to swap these two limits here, so that the bigger number is now on the top, that actually negates the expression. The reason is, is when we do the integration and we substitute the limits in, we always substitute in the top number first and then the bottom one and subtract them. But can you see that if we were to substitute them in the other way around, that would negate that expression because you'd be subtracting them the other way around. So if you swap these round to become two and one, that gets rid of that minus. So we now have two brackets, u minus one over u. And that's convenient because we got rid of that minus and we've got these numbers the right way around now. It wouldn't matter if they were the wrong way around, but this is just slightly simpler to do. Let's expand the brackets. So we have two u minus two over u. And then if we divide each of these terms by u, we get two minus two over u. So let's actually do that integration now. So the two becomes two u, because we're integrating with respect to u, and that becomes minus two ln u, with bounds of two and one. And let's use normal brackets now. We sub in the two into this first, become four minus two ln two. And we sub in the one to get two minus two ln one. Note that ln of 1, like any log of 1, is just going to be 0. So we just get 4 minus 2, which is 2, minus 2, then 2. And that is the final answer.